Hey everyone, my name is Ben Chaish. I am a wedding and elopement photographer based in the Pacific Northwest. And today we're gonna to talk about gear, but we're also gonna talk about kind of the use case for why you would use a particular part of gear over another more, maybe say more traditional type of photography gear. And so today we're gonna to talk about the idea of using constant lights, video lights, LED panels, whatever you wanna call them. Um, sort of instead of, or the different cases where an LED light might be a little more useful than a traditional speed light. Now I'll also note a little bit that this will be a slightly different video than my typical gear reviews. Uh, originally I was gonna make two separate videos. One where I did like a more in-depth breakdown of this particular LED panel. And then one uh, for my Patreon where I talk more about um, kind of the techniques about how I go about making things for photography. But I actually decided to kind of like slam both of those together into a video that hopefully will be a little bit more beneficial to the average YouTube viewer. Um, and also kind of give you an idea of what uh, my Patreon videos are more often a little bit more like uh, because they involve, yeah, more technique and a little bit more learning and a little bit less about the details and specifications of any particular piece of gear. Now to get this out of the way right off the bat, Falcon Eyes uh, sent me this F7 Fold a few months ago. Uh, sort of for the, the purpose of review. And normally I don't just take offers for random pieces of gear, but it so happened that I was actually looking for a new LED panel of sorts for my wedding photography. And this was one of the things that was already on my list. So when they contacted me, it seemed like a good fit um, and something that I was already planning on making a video for as well. Um, but there's no other expectations other than I did promise them that I would make a video talking about this kind of stuff. So take that for what it's worth. I'm not being paid to say anything and uh, they're not gonna see this video before it goes out or anything like that. So. All right, so that being said, there are definitely use cases for both, and there's lots of ways that you can kind of use um, different lighting for different reasons, right? So the idea is that a speed light like this is a much more kind of traditional method of lighting for photography, um, and there are lots of amazing reasons why a speed light like this or you know a large strobe is going to be a better option than an LED panel in many different instances. Um, so for one, you know, relatively in size, they're actually fairly similar, although the LED panel is significantly heavier. Um, the idea is that, you know, with an LED light like this, you are getting a constant light that is, you know, constantly going. Um, so you're not getting as high or bright as an output as a small flash like this. And this is a Godox TT350. Um, I picked this up recently, and if you are shooting any kind of mirrorless camera, especially a Leica or yeah, any mirrorless camera really, they make multiple different models, but I found this to be a really, really good option. I think they're like in the 70 to $90 range, uh, so they're pretty inexpensive. They're about half the size of a normal speed light, so on the smaller cameras, it fits a little better. It only takes two AA batteries um, and has a lot of really good features. Um, you know, they can turn around, it has the bounce card, a bunch of stuff. Um, but the reason to use something like this, for me at least, is a really kind of quick and dirty way to make a decent portrait. A lot of times if you really just need to like grab a photo of two people standing next to each other or something, I can use this, bounce the flash up, use this little bounce card, um, stuff like that. And then during kind of just the normal party dancing time of the night where having kind of a paparazzi style flash would be totally fine. This is a really, really great option. But as a wedding photographer that is really trying to be really thoughtful and uh, empathetic to the emotions of others and trying not to be too distracting to pull people out of those moments, I find that um, throwing flash into specific moments during a wedding isn't something that I am interested in doing. And I've been to a few weddings before where the photographer has been using flash during certain moments and I found that to be very, very distracting and it takes me out of 
kind of witnessing that moment and um, yeah, has just been something that I've never been interested in doing. Um, and so there, there are, I think there's four different times during a wedding that I kind of refuse to use flash. Um, the first of which is the ceremony. I just never will use a flash during the ceremony uh, or a first look. So that's, that's kind of a combo, I guess. Um, so the ceremony or first look, I just find it too distracting. It pulls you out of the moment. It makes it into a big production. Um, and so, yeah, that's one of the times. The other time would be a first dance or kind of like a family dance where there it's like a, you know, formal dance where it's like a mom and a son or vice versa or whatever combo. Um, during those moments, I really don't want to use flash because in my opinion, that kind of pulls people out of that situation because it's just pop, 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 feels kind of like, uh, you know, paparazzi and stuff like that and can be really distracting. Uh, the other time would be during speeches. Um, again, you know, someone's giving a really emotional speech or something like that and then a photographer is just kind of like blasting a flash. In my opinion, that pulls people out of that moment and a lot of the time, and not, not all the time, but a lot of the time, the resulting image feels a little bit less realistic than it felt like to be there as well. So with an LED kind of constant light, you are given the ability to change the ambient lighting and the key lighting or whatever it might be for not just your sensor for that brief moment in time that the flash goes off, but you're also able to change that experience for everybody in the room, which again is kind of what you're doing with the flash. You're changing the experience from what it would be but I think the cool thing about a video light is that you can sort of enhance what's going on in the room without detracting from that experience. With modern cameras, you're able to do a lot of really, really good stuff in terms of low light performance. But the problem sometimes is that it is so dark that even for the guests, um, that experience is a little bit just too dark and too you know, maybe the couple or the person giving a speech or something like that is backlit uh, and just the lighting is not great for everybody. So a really, really easy way to fix that is by using a constant LED panel like this where you can pop it on and then, you know, use a really subtle way to kind of fill in some lighting for people. Um, and the, the best thing about a, a light like this that has a little bit more information is you can change the color temperature so you can bring it down to a really, really warm tone, or you can blast it up into a really, really cool tone, um, which I mean, super blue. But the nice thing is you can kind of move it between different settings to dial in kind of the ambient light temperature that maybe another light is giving off in the room so that you can, you know, use different ways to light people um, and kind of enhance that feeling there. So like this weekend, I was at a wedding where they did speeches out on a deck and it was really nice because the person speaking was speaking towards the ocean, towards the sunset, which looked amazing. But as the sun went down, it got darker and darker and darker and darker and darker. And that first kind of bit of fill light that was coming in from the uh, sunset had slowly disappeared. And then the house behind them was lighting them up from behind. So what I was able to do was run into my camera bag, grab this out, pop it on. Um, and then the first thing I did was kind of dialed in. I looked at the ambient lighting color. Um, so this is a bicolor light, which means, uh, I wonder if I can, if I move it down enough, maybe you can see that there are kind of multiple different colors in here. Um, so it's like every other color and what you can do is dial in the color by mixing the intensity of kind of the lighter colors or the warmer colors and the cooler tones um, to get kind of your, so as we move through here, you can see it changing to, yeah, there we go. So like those are the warm ones, those are the cool ones and so in the middle is kind of where you can get the different um, kind of mixtures of that and then you can move it up in intensity. Um, so the first thing I'll do is kind of dial in the color temperature to make sure that I'm using a color temperature that is also working with and enhancing what's already going on. And then I can kind of subtly dial in the light and the amount that I'm getting out of it. Um, so that I'm not like just overpowering and just blasting something at people, but it's something that I'm able to kind of, um, 
yeah, used to enhance the experience of everybody there by helping light somebody um, that might be speaking or dancing or whatever the case may be. Now with this one specifically, the cool thing about it is you do have these kind of um, two panels, which is great. Um, so I can either transport it in my bag, fold it up like this, or I can open up and stick it in like the laptop compartment of my own bag. So in doing that, you know, you're able to pack it down to something small like this, but then also when you open it up, you get a larger panel, a larger light source, um, which is, yeah, super helpful for me. Um, one of the annoying things about this light though is that yes, it's connected and it's sold as its own kind of like unit like this, um, but the lights themselves aren't connected. And so in doing that, like on Saturday, what I had to do was turn this light on, dial in the settings and then turn the second one on and then go in and adjust and grab those same settings. Um, so I do wish that there was a way to kind of sync these two lights together. It'd be really, really helpful. Um, but I kind of understand why you can't. But the nice thing about them being connected as well is that in doing this, you know, you could always set this down on a table, but it's gonna be pretty flimsy. Um, but in the connection, you're able to kind of turn it like this, set it down on a table or something like that if you don't have a light stand and you are allowing the light to go in more places, um, but also you are having it be way more stable so it's not gonna just kind of fall over. So this is definitely the kind of quick and dirty way to do it. It's me running in, grabbing this out of my bag, running back out, tossing it on a table. Uh, it's not the best thing in the world because I don't travel with light stands because I travel super light weight and uh, everything like that. But I found that sticking this on top of like a speaker or a table or uh, a bunch of different things. Uh, I've also given it to people in a wedding party or like a brother or something like that and just said, hey, can you just hold this real quick like this for the next like five minutes? And you know, someone's really easily able to just hold it like this. They're part of the thing. Uh, it definitely takes their experience out of it, but I found that most people are really kind of excited to help. So one of the other things you can do with this light is, yes, they're connected like this, but you can, if you wanted to, take it apart um, and make it into two separate lights. So if you wanted to be a little bit more professional about things, uh, you could bring small ball heads or something like that and then shove them up on multiple light stands like this, uh, which would be great because then you can have multiple light sources and things like that. Um, and then they are super magnetic. So um, actually this way, whoop, <laughs> they're super magnetic. So uh, they can travel well together and kind of just pop in like this. Um, but again, the thing about it is that it is two separate lights. So you have two separate lights that work really well together that uh, kind of magnet like this and can connect. Um, but there are two separate lights, you have to adjust them separately. Um, so I wish there was a way to, maybe even via like Bluetooth or something like that, just sync the settings, um, which would be a nice thing for Falcon Eyes to think through maybe in a, a new model or a firmware update or something like that. Uh, but the other nice thing is that these come with internal batteries. So they also charge by USB-C, which is amazing. But again, the kind of bummer about it is you have to have two separate cables to charge them individually, which is kind of a bummer, but I mean, I get what they're doing and why they're doing it, um, which still works. So there's a bunch of other features in here that I don't particularly use as a photographer and not a filmmaker. So you have all these different options of ways to kind of adjust things and uh, put all different colors if that's something you like to do. Um, you know, you have like these settings, um, which is again, something I would not need to do. Um, you know, it's cool stuff if you really wanna get into that. But as a photographer, this kind of does nothing for me. Um, but you can definitely dial in specific colors, which is great. And the app has uh, the ability for you to take a photo and then click on a specific color uh, that it will match as well. But for the vast majority, I basically just stick on the ability to change the color temperature and the intensity, and that has worked really, really well for me. So thanks so much for watching. I will leave you guys with some um, images I've taken with LED panels. Um, if you are interested in this light or the speed light, I will make um, you know links available in the description down below. 
Let me know if you have any questions about this too. Um, I know that kind of LED lighting is uh, definitely less traditional, but I think is going to be a lot more useful for a lot of people moving forward. And uh, it's something that I have really, really enjoyed using and think works really, really well for wedding photography. So thanks so much again, and I will see you all in the next one.